The series is set in a dystopian city called New London, where humanity has evolved significantly and drastically. Human beings no longer reproduce, and each fetus is created in a lab and designated as a particular cast. The five casts are Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and Epsilon. Alphas and Betas are designated the smartest and most privileged, while the lower casts, like Deltas and Epsilons, are cloned and given undesirable jobs. Once born, the children are all conditioned using electric prods to stick to their designation. They should just give them all PS fives and Netflix, they'll stay in their lane. The place is ultra-futuristic, there is no crime or violence, everyone leads a healthy life, and most importantly, people are treated with respect. But with that being said, there are also three strange rules implemented in New London. Because reproduction is now the responsibility of the state, there is no longer a concept of a family, of a father or mother. No one is allowed to marry or be in a monogamous relationship, and having privacy is strictly prohibited. The entire population of New London is implanted with a bionic eye chip known as Indra, which is supposed responsible for maintaining transparency in the city. Because of the chip, each and every inhabitant can see what others are doing, whether it be at work or at the toilet. The only way to go private is by taking your eye chip out, but this is generally considered immoral. Also, anyone who feels even a hint of any negative emotion such as sadness, fear, or anxiety needs simply to take a happy pill called Soma. In a day, one might even eat 100 Somas. Thanks to this pill, New London prides itself as being the only city in the world where no one is sad. At the start, we are introduced to one of our protagonists, Lenina Crown, a Beta Plus inhabitant who works as a microbiologist for the New London government. One day, while she is busy with work, she is suddenly summoned to an Alpha Plus Bernard's office. Since one has to obey their seniors, Lenina quickly heads there, and on the way, we get a glimpse of the beautiful and futuristic city. When she arrives, Bernard warns her that she's breaking rules and being selfish by exclusively sleeping with another Alpha Plus named Henry. When Lenina denies this, Bernard simply pulls up a projection showing all 22 times she and Henry had slept together in the past few weeks, demonstrating the no privacy rules. Before leaving, Bernard suggests Lenina be more careful next time and hands her a soma pill to relax. Next, we are shown an advertisement of the Savage Lands. The Savage Lands is considered a theme park to the members of New London. It is the place where natural born humans who refused to sign up to the New London Project 200 years ago continue to live. People in the Savage Lands have relationships, get married, and even have children. That said, they're all extremely poor and live in rundown communities far away from the glitz and glamour of of New London. People out here don't take Soma, they just try to survive, but they also have more freedom. But for the people of New London, the savages are just a means of amusement, just like a zoo. They even perform different derogatory tricks to amuse their advanced counterparts. Meanwhile, in New London, Bernard is ordered by the director of New London, Ed, to go and have a look at an accident. On reaching there, Bernard finds a large crowd gathered around a corpse who has apparently fallen from a tall building. The deceased is identified as an Epsilon cleaner. Strangely, another Epsilon, C Jack 60 is seen grieving his friend as if he has developed some feelings. But before anyone says a word, Bernard distributes Soma to the entire crowd to cope with their trauma from seeing the body and sends them all away. Everyone wants to believe he just fell from one of the balconies, but Bernard starts to wonder if something more sinister occurred. If he did not fall, could he have jumped? Considering everyone is supposed to be happy all the time, the idea of committed the unthinkable is unheard of. Following this, he heads to his good friend, Wilma Watson, who is also the head of pleasurable parties in the city. She is responsible for arranging erotic night parties, where the inhabitants of New London can come and relieve themselves. Bernard tells her about the deceased Epsilon, and how he may have committed the unthinkable, but Watson rebuffs his claims, claiming that it's impossible. She also asserts that even if an Epsilon starts thinking on their own, the Soma Pill will never allow them to become depressed and commit such an act. The series then cuts to the Savage Lands, where we are introduced to our other protagonist, John. He is a hard-working and honest man, who works as the props manager for a savage circus. However, he is often bullied by his boss and other colleagues for being weak. He lives with his alcoholic but caring mother, Linda, who stays at home all day, waiting for her estranged husband to return. John always tells her to forget about the past and move on, but she doesn't want to. That night, as the two are sleeping, John wakes up when he hears someone outside. He grabs a weapon and slowly opens the door, only to see his best friend Madison and a bunch of other armed people there. And before he can say anything, the strange people apprehend him and take him away. Shortly after, John is taken to a secluded place where the leader of the group, Sheila, introduces herself. She reveals that her people are a resistant cult who are adamant on driving out the New World scumbags. Here, we get to know that a minority of the Savage Lands have become tired of being treated as animals by the New Londoners. Hence, they want to put an end to it all. And since John works for the props department, he's in charge of loading the fake guns. Sheila wants him to load the guns with real bullets so that they can massacre the next batch of New Londoners. Scared, John says that he can't do it, but Sheila warns that if he doesn't, he and his mother will be hunted down. Elsewhere, Bernard is still disoriented and confused by the visions he saw earlier that 
that day. Hence, to relax himself, he takes his eye chip out for a while. But, as soon as he does so, the director of New London, Ed, calls him to his office. There, he tells Bernard that he is unfit to be an Alpha Plus, because he is not assertive and demanding enough. He also reprimands Bernard for acting private, and suggests he take a vacation to the Savage Lands to clear his mind. That evening, a slightly upset Bernard runs into Lenina, and shares everything that transpired with him that day. He also reveals that he has started experiencing feelings like loneliness, and that is why he is being sent to the Savage Lands. Lenina empathizes with him, and decides to help him out. She agrees to go to the Savage Lands together with him. The next morning, they board a rocket, which takes them to their destination in less than 12 minutes. Take that, Bezos. When they reach their hotel, the receptionist briefs them about the different tours and attractions that they can partake in Savage Lands. In particular, Lenina is taken aback by the strange customs here, like getting pregnant, driving vehicles, fighting with each other, and even taming animals. After this, they board a tour bus and spectate different savage events, which are incomprehensible in New London, like the push and pull at a department store, marriage, and faith in God. On the other hand, a reluctant John is forced to load the real bullets into the gun, fearing that the cult members will go after his mother. Even his best friend, Madison, starts ordering him around. A while later, the last show of the day, The House of Monogamy, commences, and all the New Londoners, including Bernard and Lenina, are seated in the audience. For a while, things go as usual, but when it's time for the prop gun to fire, a real bullet comes out and kills a person. The audience still thinks it's part of the show, so they watch in excitement. But soon, some cult members get up from their seats and start shooting at everyone. They kill many New Londoners. And seeing this, Lenina finally realizes that something is wrong. She quickly grabs Bernard and runs away from the place, while barely avoiding the gunshots. But, unfortunately, just as they reach a bit further, she realizes that Bernard has been shot in the chest, and that he is losing consciousness. Somehow, she drags him to a nearby residence, and starts crying. And to make matters worse, the cult members arrive outside, looking for them. John spots them and gets ready to alert the other cult members, but when he sees the innocent couple, he surprisingly changes his mind, and decides to help them. Shortly after, John brings the couple to his house, where his kind mother, Linda, tries her best to save Bernard. She takes the bullet out from his body, and gets ready to stitch his wounds. But just then, John's friend Madison arrives outside. She has come looking for the final two New Londoners, because apparently, someone saw them fleeing in this direction. John quickly hides them in the attic, and welcomes Madison inside. He promises her that he doesn't know about the New Londoners, but Madison is skeptical. She starts searching around the house, and suddenly, Bernard gains consciousness and starts wailing in pain, enraged that she has been lied to. She points her gun at John, but fortunately, Linda stabs her from behind and kills her. Eh, Madison sucked anyway. After this, all four of them get in John's car and leave the house, while the cult members close in. Along the way, they notice that the bus in which the New Londoners arrive has been totally destroyed. Bernard, who has started feeling a bit better now, starts blaming the savages for everything, but Lenina inserts that they are alive because of them. Meanwhile, we learn that John's mother Linda was also an inhabitant of New London, and that she had come to the Savage Lands three decades back with her love interest. But, after she became pregnant, she decided to stay in Savage Lands for her son, as it is illegal to have a child in New London. Her husband left with the promise of coming back, but he never did. We also learn that there is an electromagnetic barrier which surrounds the Savage Lands. If a savage tries crossing it, he or she is immediately burnt to death. But, a resident of New London, like Linda, can bypass it effortlessly. However, her son John, who was born under the Savage Lands, requires assistance from an Alpha Plus like Bernard. This is why she helped the New Londoners, hoping that she and John can return back to their home. After a while, the group reaches the border, which unfortunately is being checked by the cult members. Hence, Linda guides everyone to a nearby jungle, which also has a way across the barrier. They travel on foot, and are almost there. But suddenly, a bunch of armed cult soldiers start shooting at them. Bernard and Lenina quickly cross the barrier, and when a cult soldier tries following them, he is burnt to ashes. <laughs> what an idiot. Seeing this, John hesitates to go, giving the cult soldiers ample time to take a shot. Fortunately, Linda pushes him over the line, and John gets out of the Savage Lands without being burnt. This is possible because both his parents are New Londoners. With this, all of them escape the place, while the cruel cult leader, Sheila, stares at them. Unfortunately, when they board the rocket, John realizes that his mother got shot while trying to protect them, and she tells them to watch out and take care. She slowly succumbs to her injuries. In the next scene, the group is returned to New London, and using the highly advanced medical services, Bernard becomes completely healed. However, Lenina feels strange, and is ridden with guilt and sadness. Even the Soma cannot help her. It appears as if she has started garnering feelings, something which is not possible in New London. On the other hand, John has been kept confined in a room, where he keeps screaming about his mother. Ed and Mustafa Mond, the most intelligent person in all the land, observe him closely, and deduce that the savages are extremely weak when it comes to dealing with someone's demise. While Ed wants him to suffer, Mond is empathetic, and decides to 
let him integrate into New London for his heroics. At last, she lets him out of the room, and John glances at the advanced city for the first time. The next morning, the integration of John begins. Ed and Mustafa Mond assign Bernard with the task, as he knows the savage personally. However, things don't quite go as planned. John is scared of even the basic amenities like the elevator, the tall skyscrapers, and even the Soma. He rejects all of them and just remains silent. After a while, a technician approaches him to measure his eyeballs for the implementation of the Indira chip. Surprisingly, he realizes that John has a very rare eyeball, which only an Alpha Exotic person has. Alpha Exotics are the rarest and the best of all inhabitants, and only 0.01% of New Londoners have ever been found as such. Despite this revelation, John refuses to have the implant, and while Bernard is away, he sneaks out of the room. He then ventures into the main hall, where all the people are amused to see a savage. They call him names and stare at him, until John freaks out and runs away. He then heads into the Epsilon section, where all of the opinionless people are having breakfast. Seeing John scared, the Epsilon with feelings from earlier, see Jack 60, who for some reason gets to use his gamer tag as his name, invites him to his table and offers him his dinner. Surprisingly, John loves it, and the two start bonding. However, their interaction is cut short when the director, Ed, barges into the room and disperses all the Epsilons. He then convinces John to come along with him, claiming that he can take him to a better place where he truly belongs. John, who is scared and confused, agrees. On the other hand, Bernard is also looking for John, and he decides to stop by Ed's office for a quick chat. Strangely, on the table, he finds Ed's eye chip, which implies that he has gone private. Since Ed is also an alpha exotic, he quickly takes out John's eye chip from earlier and compares them. Lo and behold, the two implants match, revealing that John's estranged father is none other than Ed himself. He quickly heads to his fellow Alpha Plus, Henry, and reveals this, but the latter doesn't believe it, and instead criticizes Bernard for sneaking into the director's office. Elsewhere, Ed takes John near the sea, where a rocket is waiting to take him away to his land. John is a bit skeptical because if the cult leaders find him again, they will lynch him to death. But Ed reveals that there are thousands of other cities like the Savage Lands, where people have built civilizations. He knows this because he ventured to several of them, including the Savage Lands. Hearing this, John realizes that Ed is his own father, who never came back after conceiving him. He demands answers, but Ed doesn't seem to care. As a result, John gets angry and starts a scuffle, which ends with Ed accidentally falling off the cliff to his death. But since he had left his eye chip in his office, no one saw the incident. Soon, John rushes back to the city and stumbles upon one of Watson's pleasure parties. He sees hundreds of people dancing and gets scared. But just then, the partygoers notice him. They surround John and get ready to have their way with him. But fortunately, Bernard arrives in the nick of time and rescues him. With this, John finally starts trusting Bernard, and he even eats a soma pill given to him. Meanwhile, after the incident at Savage Lands, Lenina has started behaving strangely. She is always lost in her thoughts, rarely goes out with her friends, behaves rudely sometimes, and even tries to keep herself from taking the soma pills. In one instance, she has some fun with the Alpha Plus, Henry, but dominates him, as if she is the Alpha. Let's go. On the other hand, Mustafa Mond tells Bernard that their director Ed accidentally fell to his death. Bernard obviously doesn't believe it, and instead reveals that he was actually John's father. Surprisingly, Mond already knew of this. She mentions that this is why they have to integrate John into their society as soon as possible, because it is the least he deserves. Bernard agrees, and before leaving, he promises to handle the situation well. To start with, he takes John to the Children's Learning Center, where a bunch of kids are now learning how to play a game. Expectedly, John is not interested, but still, he sits around as the kids don't stare and judge him. After this, Bernard takes him to the pleasure party designer, Watson's place. He introduces the two, but surprisingly, Watson already knows about the savage. In fact, she is very aroused by him, because of last night's encounter where he attracted a lot of people. She wants to have fun with the savage, but Bernard tells her that John is very emotional, and that's why it wouldn't be a good idea. Instead, he promises to bring him along to that evening's pleasure party. Elsewhere, Lenina goes to play tennis with her best friend Franny. In New London, people play only for fun and not competitiveness or prizes. However, Lenina, who has completely changed her behavior, humiliates her friend before walking out of there. She then reaches her room and eats several soma pills to calm herself down. At night, the pleasure party commences, and Bernard takes John there. He plans to teach him the ways of interacting with others, but before that, a desperate Watson arrives and takes John away to her cabin. Wasting no time, the two immediately have fun. Meanwhile, Bernard, who is alone, chats to a few beta inhabitants about his savage friend as the people become intrigued. Bernard also starts boasting about the time when he barely escaped out of the Savage Lands. But just then, the arrogant Henry, who has also become the new director, arrives and humiliates him in front of everyone. A reinvigorated John also arrives at the scene and overhears everything. Seeing his only friend getting bullied, he becomes angry and convinces Bernard to take action. He even teaches him how to punch someone as apparently, the people of New London don't even know how to throw a fist. After a bit of practice, the two head back to the club and see Henry dancing with Lenina. Enraged, Bernard swings his hand and punches 
punches Henry hard in the face, shocking everyone. The Epsilon C Jack 60, who is also present, witnesses the commotion and smiles. Just like my days in the Fortnite lobby. It appears as if he also wants to dance, to be free, and to punch people. In the final scene, Bernard meets Lenina in a private room, and the two share how they have been feeling different as of late. When they get close and hold hands, the savage John is having the time of his life, dancing with several people.